we will get the speaker uh, to be presenting as well today. But prior to that, uh, now I'm sure all of you are seeing my screen and you all obviously know what the topic is for today, right? Uh, so I just want to quickly check with you guys that uh, what is it that you're expecting from today's session? Uh, I do know that we have some uh, repeat attendees as well who attend our usual webinars. This uh, Those who have been attending our webinars definitely know that this isn't the first time. So what is it that you're expecting from today's session is something that I'd like to know. So I will leave the chat on for a while. Okay. So obviously this webinar isn't specifically for HR or we are not, uh, you know, targeting any specific divisions as such. Uh, the space is open for anyone who's uh, climbing up the leadership ladder. I would like to say, I keep it that way. Uh, so let me leave this on and I'd like to see some responses on chat to see what is it that you're expecting from today's session. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Let me read out some responses. Uh, uh, guys, this is awesome that all of you are very energetic already. In fact, the session, uh, we look at more engagement as we move forward. Okay. Something related to leadership role and enhancement is what Mr. Zahid says. Mr. Surendra, leadership qualities and managerial skills. Okay. Interesting. Structure to lead and manage the team. Okay. Straightforward. Mr. Hariharan, leadership and team management. Okay. Mr. Palani Swami says coaching. Team management again, how to be a leader uh, whom the team can look up to. Okay. Mr. Sudeep says situational leadership. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, Mr. Rameshi says uh, leadership qualities that uh, should be required. Okay. Same with Ms. Shruti. Romi, uh, what defines a leader versus a manager? Okay. You would like to see the, uh, the differential factors over there. Okay. Mr. Mahendran, apply the strategy and achieve success. How do we do that? And Ms. Sujata says, managing team during critical situations as a leader. Okay, I think that's a very core uh, necessity, in fact, right? Okay, interesting. All right, anything else? Any other uh, responses that uh, our audience would like to put up on chat? Guys, as I mentioned, we'll be starting off shortly. Once again, extremely sorry for the delay. We will be starting off in just a little bit. Great. Yeah, it's working. All right. Uh, so audience, thank you so much for being a wonderful set of audience already. Uh, we look forward to the webinar. I hope you're able to see our speaker. And before we go forward, let me just quickly get into the uh, slideshow view. Uh, Mr. Ravi, if you can help me out with that. Yeah, I'm just figuring out that. Okay. okay. And uh, we've had a good bunch of responses on chat already, sir, to uh, give you an update. EPT can we expect? Yeah, um, Mr. Ramishri, I'll I'll address that as we move forward. So that can you see the screen? See the screen. Yeah. So, uh, all right, audience. I hope all of you are able to uh, see the screen as well. A quick response on chat would be great. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, looks like everyone's able to see it, sir. So I hope. I can't see uh, the video. I can only see the screen. I can only see the slide deck. Uh, yeah, uh, in your uh, from your point of view, yes, but the rest of them will be able to see you for sure. <laughs> okay, so um, all right, I think we can get started. Thank you all for being patient. Uh, so let's move forward. Um, so how this is going to go about is we will have a quick presentation of a few slides of the company that I represent, uh, followed by which I will introduce the speaker, uh, Mr. Ravi himself, and I will hand it over to him where we will have. Uh, the slides and we will also have uh, a personalized q a where uh, mr ravi will address your queries and um, uh, just a quick uh, a point over here i hope the ones who have registered and are with us today obviously received that uh, microsoft form that is prepared by our speaker i'm sure we had a, you know we had about 90 to 20 responses on that end uh, so those of you who have responded thank you so much uh, i think that we have collated and we will show that as well during the presentation. So let's move forward. Um, so let me, uh, uh, yeah, you can go back to the previous slide, sir. I'll just talk a little bit on this end. So my name is Siddharth and I handle product marketing at Web Solutions. I will be a moderator for today. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the company, Web Solutions. Uh, we were in fact part of Wipro itself. Uh, in 1988, we were into the 
uh, into manufacturing of printers, um, toners, cartridges, dot matrix printers. This is primarily our business. And in 2000, uh, the company decided to come out of Wipro and become a separate entity. And today, uh, over the last 23 years, we have evolved uh, from the printer business itself and we have branched into the digital transformation side of things. We have workflow automation solutions for enterprises. We have GST taxation solutions, so on and so forth. So I will uh, more on that as we move forward. We can go to the next slide, sir. All right. Uh, some quick pointers on the company. As I mentioned, we have presence for the last 23 years, in fact. And um, we have close to 500, 535 enterprise customers. Our business also translates to retail side. We have presence on the retail end as well. And we have close to 2 lakh customers there. And uh, we have a whole bunch of customers from various uh, industry verticals, be it manufacturing, IT, life sciences, healthcare, so on and so forth. So let us move forward. Um, I will talk a little more about uh, what our company does. These are our solution offerings, as you can see. We have management services. On the digital end, we have two different solutions. And as I also mentioned, we have presence on the retail end. Let's move forward to the next slide. All right. So. Uh, let me take about two minutes on uh, the solution offering that we have. Now, on the management services end, what we have here is asset management. What that essentially means is, um, assume that you have about 30, 40 printer requirements in different locations of your company, right? Uh, now, we as a vendor will offer to handle your asset, uh, asset management. Uh, your existing printers will also be able to add new printers based on your request. And we will uh, take care of this on a remote basis where we also look at your toners, cartridges, your paper consumption, all of this will be taken care as a periodic maintenance package. Now, you might also ask me, how is it that you are charged? How is it that you charge me? So we charge you on a pay per print basis. What that means is based on the number of papers you print uh, on a periodic basis, we might decide that. Now, that is how we will be able to charge you. And aside this, we uh, take care of complete service and support. And as you probably would have seen in the previous slides, uh, we have presence in over 2000 plus locations. And we are also India's number one MPS company. Moving to the second serial number. Now, intelligent office automation, let me make it a little more simple. Uh, we are the authorized distributor for Rico Japan. Now, Rico is actually, uh, to give you a background, they are Asia's largest printer manufacturer. And they do not have sole presence in India for so-and-so reasons. Now, they can only sell through distributors and we are one of their authorized distributors in India. So we have a catalog of 10, 15 printers and that is what we take care of. Now, serial number three, before we go to the next slide. Uh, now, we have a GST solution. I'm sure all of you have heard of the term GST. We have a dedicated GST solution which takes care of everything, anything tax. So this comes in handy for finance teams of any organization which deals with sales and returns the purchase invoices. That is what we do. And I said that we have models for eBay bill invoicing. We undertake ERP integration, uh, be it SAP, Oracle, Microsoft Dynamics, NetSuite, so on and so forth through APIs. And we also have a dedicated team for managed GST filing. Now on this slide, as you can see, uh, we have our document management solution. Uh, now, this might uh, be of relevance to the audience here today. Uh, now, what this essentially means is, as the name suggests, it's a document management solution straight out of the box. But aside this, our solution offers a robust workflow automation engine with which we can provide business process automation for various departments. Like, I'm sure we have some HR uh, audience here as well, um, uh, carried forward from our previous webinars with Mr. Ravi. So, um, uh, in order to give you an example, your HR onboarding, your employer records management can be automated with our solution. Uh, so that is one use case scenario. We have automation for your legal contracts, your contract management, your approvals. Uh, that is what our solution takes care of. And we are also hosted on the cloud. So this is what our document management solution is. And lastly, as I mentioned, we also have presence on the retail end. So we have these POS machines, retail billing printers for your Kirana stores, department stores, supermarkets, so on and so forth. So that's a quick uh, uh, introduction about the company and I will end there. And this is a quick view of our clients. Okay, now uh, let me launch a quick poll for all of you before I head forward. Obviously, this webinar will not have any sort of demo as such because this is an exclusive webinar with our speaker. 
So I would like to launch a quick poll for all of you. Let me know if you're able to see it. Uh, I would just like to quickly take a minute to see if you're currently exploring any sort of workflow automation, automation solution or anything on the HR end. I will leave this poll on for the next one minute. So based on your responses, our team will be able to reach out uh, to the ones interested uh, in the next few working days and we will be able to arrange a free demo as such. So I'll leave this on uh, for the next couple seconds. Once again, thank you all for uh, the patience. We will get into the speaker's introduction in the next few minutes. All right, uh, wonderful. Let me end the poll. Okay, I will leave another 15 seconds. Let me just give some more time. <laughs> Audience, also, uh, just a quick request. You can use the chat or Q&A tab for the questions, uh, preferably the Q&A that will help me keep track as well. And if it's on chat, I will. I may miss out something, but I'll try my best to not miss out and read it out. All right, I'll let me end the poll and we can go to the next slide. Thank you for the responses. Yeah, uh, so we can go to the next slide. Sorry, Matthew. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, the moment you've been waiting for, obviously. So uh, let me introduce the speaker, Mr. Ravi C. Dasgupta. Mr. Ravi founded RCD HR Consulting in 2015, leveraging over 28 years of expertise in corporate HR to be a consultant for SMEs going through the pangs of growth by helping them evaluate the effectiveness of their HR systems and various practices to align HR processes and systems fully with business imperatives. Now, his main focus is on comprehensive review of an organization's talent management strategy, and he will also help in revamping HR systems and processes in areas, in specific HR areas like talent acquisition and performance management. Uh, now, Mr. Ravi also provides standalone HR consulting services in areas such as coaching, employee surveys, 360 degree surveys policy codification, OD, that is organization development, and facilitation of leadership development, uh, which will also be in alignment with our topic for today. Uh, to give you a little more background about him, he has coached business leaders and high potentials in various MNCs and Indian organizations. Now, during his last corporate HR engagement, he was instrumental in uh, elevating Biocon's human capital and processes during the period 2007 to 2013 in the capacity that is the designation of VP and head group HR. To give you a background under his watch, the company grew from 2000 to 10,000 employees during which time he put in place appropriately scalable HR enablers. Uh, 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 now a little more about him. His contribution to the HR field has been awarded with the Indira Super Achiever Award in 2003 the HR Leadership Award, that is a Global HR Excellence Awards for the year 2008 and 2009, the Asia-Pacific HR Congress in 2008, and IPE HR Leadership Award in 2012. RCD is an associate facilitator with Think Talent Services, and is also a certified coach of the Think Coaching Consortium. Listed in the 10 most promising HR Process Service Providers 2018 by Silicon India and was also featured in their HR process special dated January 2015. Now, uh, all this on the serious side, a little more on the lighter side. Um, he's never happier than when he's traveling, his life's passion being nature photography and being out on the open highway in his SUV and his bike. Uh, Mr. Ravi also resumed motorcycling two years ago and after a gap of close to 25 years. Uh, I believe in uh, uh, somewhere in June, right, sir? You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, I don't want to mention your age, if that's okay with you. you <laughs> he wrote an, yeah, at the age of 57, close to that, he rode a, a Royal Enfield bullet around Ladakh and down to Manali with some of his biking friends. Uh, so that was quite a long time back. I, I believe you keep riding your bike often, right? Yeah, so that is a quick, rather quick and comprehensive um, uh, you know, introduction on his end. And uh, I would like to stress on the fact that he's an uh, executive coach and HR process consultant 
So those of you who are looking on those lines in any sort of consultations, please reach out to him. Mr. Ravi is there for that. So I take absolute pleasure in introducing him, in introducing him on yet another webinar. I'm sure the audience is looking forward to directly hearing from you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Siddharth. And uh, I must, first of all, compliment the audience for bearing with us today. Uh, I actually reached my office at 3.15 and uh, somehow Zoom was just not cooperating. Uh, it kept saying that you are, when each time I tried to log in, it said you're supposed to come in as a panelist and it just wasn't working. So finally, we've managed somehow. I still can't see myself. I can only see my slide deck. So I'm just hoping for the best. So basically what I'm going to do today is talk about leadership. And while I will be using certain uh, broad uh, leadership uh, theories or, or principles, I'm going to pepper it with a lot of examples of what I have seen in my own journey. You know, so people who I used to report to and perhaps some, sometimes some of the things that I have done myself. So I'll be using those broad principles, but I'll be coloring it with uh, examples from my own life. Okay. So we'll just start. This is a, a broader overview of the presentation. Uh, obviously, the last few years has made a lot of challenge for all of us as leaders. I think what happened during the pandemic when everyone was caught by surprise, and I think it was a great call for to action for a lot of leaders because it came without warning and many of us had to rapidly change the way we did things. Then uh, Siddharth talked about the poll that some of you have responded to. I will share with you a few of the collated findings from there and we'll discuss about how those things are important in your journey as a leader. Impactful leadership and the mindset required for impactful leadership is really what my whole presentation is going to be all about. So I'll be talking about influence, inspiration, leading change, and various other things that are involved in being an impactful leader. Uh, the fourth and fifth point, frankly, the building of high performance teams and communicating with influence. Uh, frankly, I have not put a slide on either of these because as I went along, I realized that I had more than enough content for the day. Why this features here is that this is the very, the, when I was preparing for this presentation was the very first time I've ever used chat GPT and it suggested to me this agenda. So I've kept it there for all of you to see, uh, especially those who have not used chat, chat GPT before. Uh, I found it very useful, the kind of the sequencing of ideas. So, so I've just kept it there, but I will pepper it with a bit about High performance teams and communication as we go through it. Emotional intelligence and leveraging your emotional intelligence, I think, are very, very fundamental aspects of leadership. And we'll definitely look at that with a little bit more care. Uh, the seventh one is really what I am going to end with and what I want to leave you with, which is how do we take care of ourselves? Because many of us. We are so focused on our work. We are so busy doing stuff that our self gets neglected. And that can lead you to burnout. It can lead to various issues. It can even lead you to underperforming as far as your capabilities are concerned. So I will be talking a bit about the kind of things I think you should do in terms of self-care. Self and like I said, right through this presentation, I will, while I will be having a framework which Chat GPT so kindly provided to me. I'll be peppering it with examples of real life leaders who I worked with. And with that, I think I'm going to start moving on. So, the, like I said, the first thing we talk about is the the way the 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 pandemic actually impacted leadership, because suddenly overnight you had to move from. A, in-person offices to remote working. And then of course, later on, the hybrid working happened. There was a need for a lot of agility and adaptability because things kept changing in a very, very dynamic framework. And how we responded as leaders, how we, how we were able to 
anticipate those changes also, also to some extent really helped us. Emotional intelligence and empathy, I think, was really called for. Almost everyone was one way or the other impacted by the pandemic. And how did we as leaders empathize with our people? How did we support them emotionally when they were going through tough times? I think was very, very important. Crisis management and resilience, especially for the HR guys, suddenly this was a whole new uh, arena for them to play in. And I think most of you will agree with me that uh, the HR leaders really uh, were admirable in the way they went about doing this. There was a need for digital literacy. There was a need for adopting technology. Uh, none of us had heard of Zoom until a few years ago. And suddenly everybody was on Zoom and all the other uh, different ways of meeting virtually. I think inclusiveness again was something that was very, very important. And it became difficult, especially when people were remote. So how did you make that thing happen? How did you make the, the remote team collaborate? I think these were all great challenges and great learnings for all of us as leaders. And the reason why I put it here is because I think it really if I look back those these 35 years since I started off my career, this two or three years was probably the most challenging period for me and I'm sure for most of us. And therefore, I just wanted to put down what were the things that really helped us to emerge out of it. Now, these are, the, these are a few slides which uh, Siddharth very kindly put together for me. This is from the responses that people had shared from uh, the little instrument that we put out. So the first thing about uh, communicating a compelling story and, and, and how do you create and communicate a compelling vision for your team and organization. Uh, as you can see, there are about 20 of you who have responded to it. And clearly, there are some of you who felt that you have a long way to go as far as doing this is concerned. And this is the reason why I asked him to put this particular slide was because I felt this is something that all of us have to really work on. Being able to stand and deliver is a very, very important quality. The next thing, how do you articulate your ideas and convey information to others? Again, the rating is slightly higher, an average of about four. But as you can see, some of us felt, yeah, I'm just about okay. When it's three out of five is just about an okay rating that four of three of uh, four four participants had given themselves, and just about uh, six five rather thought that they were really good at doing it. Next thing that I want to point out is influencing and persuading others to support your ideas and initiatives. And uh, here again, I, I want to really thank those who participated, you know, because especially when it's a self-administered questionnaire, invariably I expect that I will see a lot of fours and fives. And I take that with a pinch of salt. But here I'm actually seeing people who are rating themselves two and three. And I think that is it in itself is a sign of leadership and maturity where you are able to look at yourself critically and say that, yes, I know I'm supposed to do it, but I know I'm not doing it as well as I should. So now that you know that you're not doing it as well as you should, I think that's something that you should uh, focus on and work at. Because one thing I've learned as a coach is that all behavior can be learned. And any person, once he applies his mind, once he applies his efforts to it, can make significant changes in any kind of behavior. So once you know that something is important, you know that it's something that you should do, you know that you're not doing it so well, there is nothing to stop you from practicing and all of us improve with practice. Next one, how do you recognize and manage your own emotions? Again, something very, very important. Very few of us would really say confidently, I can do it well. Uh, you can see about eight out of the audience of uh, 14 or 12 or something uh, who had responded to this question and actually said that I'm just about average at it. Because, you know, what happens when we are leaders, uh, we are in a position, position of power and authority. We therefore sometimes find it difficult difficult to control, especially our anger. You know, somebody does something, you know that they should do much better than that. Uh, you expect much more from them and yet they let you down. And it's very, very easy and very, very human 
for us to display our anger at such times. And therefore, it is important that we are able to control it, that we are able to uh, keep our emotions in check and do not see it, it, it's it's good that you show your emotions, but that you, you should it is also important that you do not go overboard, especially when you know that you are in a position of power, other people are not equal to you. And therefore, how do you take care that you don't trample over them when you display your emotions? The next one. And th this, I think, was very important. This, this, this slide number, uh, I'm sorry, I can't really see the number. I think it's 10. To what extent are you able to understand and empathize with emotions and perspective of others? So you can see somebody says that I can't at all. And you have some few people who are saying, OK, I'm pretty good at it. Some people are saying I'm very good at it. But again, like I said, this is a self-administered instrument. And really, the best judges would be the people on the other side of the table, the people who are uh, with wh whose emotions you're trying to actually read and empathize. To what extent they think that you're able to read and em empathize their emotions is what really matters. But what I wanted to bring out here is that as a leader, we need to pay attention to this. And are we doing that enough? Next one is about handling change. and. Uh, uh, new circumstances or challenges. And I, as you can see, see, this is a relatively common behavioral aspect from a leader. And this is something that we've been trained to do and something that we have been preparing ourselves to do for a long time. So it's no surprise really that we have a good number of participants who rated themselves four and five over here. Resilience, I think, is again a very, very important quality. I think this is slide number 12. So how well do you bounce back from setbacks and maintain a positive attitude in difficult times? I think that's very, very important as a leader. Even when things are really difficult, even when you really don't know uh, what's going to happen next, when you're really, really worried, your face should be calm. You should not be running around in the office. You should be walking calmly with measured pace. You should be smiling. You should be talking to people. You should be behaving just like how you do on any other normal day. In fact, a friend of mine, you know, he used to, uh, uh, he told me about this once. And I, I, I wasn't planning to tell, tell you this, but uh, I think it, it, was an, it, it was an opportunity to, to, it was an opportunity to share this. And it, it's, it came at just the right time. So he used to stay in uh, Bombay. And it so happened that from where he used to stay in his balcony, you could actually see, and this is this is many, many, many years ago, he could actually see Ratan Tata on the top of his uh, building uh, balcony or terrace or whatever. And he used to say that every day I would see him in the evening, he would come, he would stand and talk. Uh, not, not talk, he would stand, he would look around, he would uh, probably meditate, whatever he did. And he said, you know, that there was one particular day which he saw him behave just like he did on all other days. And the next day, there was this huge article in the newspaper about the, uh, that time, what was called disco union leader getting shot. You know, so obviously, this was a, must have been a very, very traumatic kind of experience for him. And yet, my friend who was watching him from across could not, mean, could not see any difference in the way he was behaving. Now, uh, how successful are you at building and nurturing high performance teams? Again, you can see there's a range of responses here. And this is something that all of us really have to work on because we are only as good as our teams. And the, the extent to which we can leverage our teams, the extent to which we can get them to participate. And I think youngsters today are so full of ideas, so full of contribution that the job of the leader is really to get them aligned and then let go and let them do it. Uh, again, th this one is fairly similar. How much are you investing in growth and development of your team members? Some of you have said four and five, some of you have said three, but clearly this is something that we have to put a lot more effort. We have to make time for it. You know? I think intention wise, all of us probably want to do it, but to what extent can we actually make the time and make it happen? I think that's what we're really looking for over here. 
Finally, the last one I wanted to talk about was the extent to which we can uphold ethical standards and inspire trust among team members. Again, this is a very, 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 very important aspect of leadership. Uh, if people cannot trust you, if people do not get inspired by you, if they do not believe what you say, uh, there's no way you can actually lead them. So you have to be focused on how do you be authentic? How do you ensure that you are able to uh, speak exactly what is in your mind and so that people can listen to you and can take their uh, guidance from that. So now I'm moving on to what I talked about as the impactful leadership mindset. And I'll just pick up a few, uh, few examples from my life to really uh, to illustrate these. So the first one is like out outcome focused approach. And I think the best example I can think of is, you know, when I joined Biocon, uh, my second or third day in office, uh, Kiran called me across to her office for a discussion. And that's when she actually gave me a instruction, a guideline, an agenda for what actually worked for me for the next seven years. And she told me, what she said was very simple. She said, I want you to help me build a world-class company. That time, Biocon was really small. We were still in industrial enzymes. We were just making our foray into biopharmaceuticals. And over the next seven years, uh, Siddharth talked about 2,000 to 10,000 people. But in that 10,000 people, there were about 40, 50 senior leaders who I had been able to bring in from US, Europe, and things like that, who could actually set up functions for us. And really, that guideline that she gave me right in the beginning was so clear, so inspiring, that it helped me stay focused and helped me to uh, work with a lot of focus for the next seven years. Visionary, again, Kiran was a fabulous example of that. I think every time we would enter into a new field, it was invariably Kiran who came up with the, the bold idea of doing that. Once she came up with the idea, of course, we had the team in place who could actually uh, pick it up and run with it. But that visionary, that actually the, able, the ability to see something way beyond what we were doing was something that she was really very good at. Empowering and collaborative. Uh, so this is another leader of, of mine that, uh, that I was inspired by. And this is a, a person named Ahmed Ali. He was my boss when I was in Smithline. He was the HR director there. Uh, and right through, you know, I used to find that I was just a manager, senior manager in the setup. But he gave me a lot of autonomy. He gave me a lot of authority. Another person who did that with me was my, uh, when I joined Allegan as the HR director, my, my first boss there, Ravi Menon, who was, I think, the best MD that I have ever worked with. A person who was really, really good as far as emotional intelligence was concerned. Very honest, very trustworthy, very authentic. And everyone in the organization, you know, could relate to him extremely well. I used to find, you know, when, when I when I joined that company, before I joined the company, actually, he grilled me for about an hour and a half. It was the toughest interview I ever had in my life. But once I joined, he never had any questions. He was always supportive. And not just me, but all the various functional heads, we could actually go to him with problems, regardless of whichever area we worked in, and we would come out with a solution. So he was he had a brilliant mind. And he, he could really apply it across different functions. Adaptability and agility. Again, I think this is something that all of us need to have. And I guess we are all working at it. Authenticity, trust. Again, I, Ravi Menon was my great uh, example there. And long-term focus, I think, was again probably Kiran because the way she could see things very, very far in the future and stay one, you know, once she decided to do something, there would be no turning back. There was no failure and all that. It was just uh, hiccups along the way. You know, she would stay focused. She would continue with it. She would find a way to make it happen. And I think that is something very, very important in leadership because 
Sometimes you bite off more than you can chew. But when that happens, do you still have the guts to continue to focus on it, to continue to, uh, to put in your efforts, to continue to make, make the difference so that eventually you're able to succeed in something that you've tried to do. Uh, I want to pick up a few uh, examples from some of the leaders who I worked with. Uh, PR Srivastava was my very first boss. Uh, he was uh, my works manager when I was in Woodless Lerlac. And he used to work really, really hard. But end of the day, once working hours were over, he and I used to play table tennis together in the factory. And later on, we both moved into the head office in Bombay. And we both used to represent uh, uh, Goodless Merlac in Time Shield and things like that. So whether it was cricket, whether it was uh, table tennis, whatever it was, he always would, I mean, he'd work hard, he'd play hard as well. But there, there were one or two things that he uh, sort of illustrated to me uh, that he could even while he was generally serious, he would he could uh, have fun while doing work. So the one example was of course, was in the factory, and this is like this is 1988 or 1989. So you can imagine if it still stays in my mind after all these years. Uh, so we had one uh, lady overseer called Kusum Ben, and basically we had a filling line which was exclusively women, and she was the overseer, the supervisor. And we used to notice that somehow every Friday she used to be absent. So one week we called her and told her, Kusum Ben, you cannot do this every, every Friday. You please be present the next Friday. And she said, oh, yes, 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 all that. But as one would expect, Friday came and Kusum Ben was not to be seen. So next day when she came, uh, uh, she had to fill up her leave card and my uh, and uh, my works manager told her boss, you will not sign her card, you will send it to me. So Kusum Ben went to him with her card and she was, she was a Gujarati woman. She didn't write English so well. So instead of writing N-O-T feeling well, she wrote N-O-T-E feeling well, note feeling well. So he under that writes noted, signs and sends it back. So she comes back very happily, goes to the time office clerk with her, with that uh, with that paper, uh, with that uh, her leave card, and he says, <laughs> "I cannot give the leave based on this. He has not, he has not sanctioned your leave. He has just written that he has noted that you are feeling well." So that that was one example with him. Another one was after we were both in the head office. One day he calls me up, and he he's sitting in his office. I'm sitting in mine. Those days we used to have these intercoms, and he says, "Ravi, ladki ke saar line marna hai kya?" So I was still a young bacha, not yet married. Of course, such opportunity is not to be missed. So I immediately got up from my office, went to his office. And to my, uh, I mean, I was so embarrassed. There was actually a ladki sitting in front of him. And it turns out that he and she uh, were both doing a course in NIIT when they had to write a term paper. And for which they had got these A4 sheets of paper and they wanted lines to be drawn on which they would write their term paper. <laughs> so, so this is an example of uh, having fun while working. Hmm? Uh, the next example also uh, was my good last days. Uh, what was uh, Sudhir Kulkarni. Now Sudhir Kulkarni was, he was not exactly my boss. I was, uh, from the, from the factory, I had got transferred to the head office and I was reporting to the vice president HR, whereas he was a senior manager who was in charge of the industrial relations. But what happened was that the VP had um, had a bypass surgery, so he was not in the office. And, and Sudhir Kutlani was way older. He was about 15, 20 years older than me. And I used to look up to him. I used to admire him. But not once would he actually give me a direct order. He would never say, Ravi, do this. He would say, Ravi, would you like to do this? And after hearing it a few times, I would tell him, sir, you are much senior to me. You are as good as my boss. Please, you just tell me what to do. I'll do it. But he never, ever did it. And then later on, I understood in life that you might have authority, but leadership is all about influence. And can you actually exert influence instead of authority is really what I, I wanted to take back. And I want you all to take back from, from here. 
Then the next is my uh, my boss when I moved to Crompton Greaves. So Ravi Shankar was the personal manager there. And uh, he hired me with a very clear purpose because the group personal manager of the, the Crompton had a lot of uh, factories in Nasik and the group personal manager was going to retire in a year and Ravi was going to take over from him. So I was supposed to be going to take over from Ravi. I learned training, I learned facilitation, I learned how to present from him. And I can tell you the generosity with which he helped us to learn and grow. Uh, I have not seen anything like this ever in my career. The rest of my career, I tried to replicate this. I tried to do what I had learned from him. And I think that's, that, that's a quality you know, of all good leaders, that when we teach other people what to do, when we show them what to do, we inspire them to actually replicate us. And therefore, the things that you do keep, gets carried on for many, many years by many, many people after you. And that's how your talent actually lives on after you. Next, I'd look, look at a brief period when I was in Bombay. I was working for a company called Apple Industries. Now, this is not the Apple computers. This is, uh, they had Apple Finance and AppTech and Hexaware and all those things. So, Ulas Page was the... Uh, CEO of HR. Hmm. Uh, again, he was an engineer by by education, but extreme, probably the strongest HR uh, leader that I ever worked with. He used to do. He used to be a guest lecturer at uh, Narsi Munji, and uh, he really knew his stuff in HR. But what I really admired about him was his emotional intelligence and how he remained calm in any kind of situation. Then comes Ahmed Ali. He was my boss when I was in Smithline Beecham. Again, what I learned from him was empowerment and delegation. And the way he used to empower me, you know, sometimes I, I was flabbergasted at the things he would do. You know, like uh, sometimes you, you all MNCs, you have these annual uh, budgeting meeting, you know, where you'd have a whole team coming from the region, the regional president, HR, whatever, I mean, head and all that from the region, at least five, the finance head, all those guys coming in and all of us had to you know, be presenting and typically the presentations is always done by the functional head. But Ahmed Ali sometimes would, they, I remember one year it was actually clashing with this, with the meeting of uh, one of these HR forums in Bombay. And Ahmed Ali had come from Bombay, so he had a lot of good old friends over there. So he he actually thought it's better for me to go for him to go to Bombay and meet all his friends. And he said, Ravi, you do the presentation. So that is the extent of empowerment and delegation that I enjoyed. And I think that really helped me a lot. Uh, coming back to Ravi Menon and Alagan days, I think the way he used to set goals, the way he used to believe in us. Uh, that was something really outstanding because he always stretched, he always had very, very stretch goals. And many of us knew that, okay, this is like, I mean, TK, we'll try, but this really, really looks impossible. But somehow he used to keep us focused on working towards those goals. And finally, uh, Kiran Mazumdar, when I, KMS is Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, which is her formal name. Uh, my final, my last corporate boss, focusing on the big picture, sharing the vision, inspiring others. So I've talked to you a bit about how she inspired me. And I must tell you, you know, later on when uh, we were bringing in any senior leaders, I, I very quickly realized that if I took in anybody to Kiran for a final interview, I mean, she decided, she thought that, yeah, Ravi has seen them if the CEO has seen the guy, then those guys, they, they've applied their minds and they, they know what's good and what's bad. So she felt interviewing per se was not her job, but inspiring she felt was her job. So she would paint such a picture for that person that he would feel, you know, that the company would fall apart if he did not come and join us. And the impact of that was that after one or two such uh, interviews, I realized that, okay, I cannot take people to Kiran first and then discuss salary with them. 
So I used to, what I used to tell them they, thereafter, all candidates thereafter is, I will discuss salary with you. If you accept it, then I will take you to Kiran. If she likes you, there will be no further discussion on salary after that. <laughs> because, you know, the way she would inspire people, they, they actually thought that, <laughs> that, that they were so great and nothing could happen without them. So, um, yeah, okay, uh, so Ravi sir, okay, I'll, I'll have to interrupt you here. I'll actually launch a poll, uh, if that's okay with you on the previous okay. slide. Yeah. yeah, so uh, just one moment. Uh, can you try sharing because I'm not able to share. I cannot see the poll at all. Is it? Okay. Just one moment. Um, it's actually grayed out. Not able to launch it. Okay. I, I think you can go ahead, sir. Let me check yeah, on this. Yeah. If, come, if it comes, it comes. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, and I, I am quite conscious that I am already at 4.30, so I'm going to move fairly fast. So, one and, and incidentally, this slide that you see here is all chat GPT generated. So what I want to do is really talk about it and share some examples from this, from my life based on the points that are raised here. So when it comes to build relationships, I think uh, no better example. Uh, so I'm now a member of BNI Biz Business Networkers International. And the founder of Business Networkers International, Aydin Meissner, one of the things that he said is, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And repeat that, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I think there's no better example about build relationships than that. And BNI is totally, totally based on building relationships. Next comes to communication. I think I talked about it a little in the introduction as well, but it's very important that we that we are able to stand and deliver. Of course, your written communication is important. Of course, your one-on-one -on -one interactions with people are important. Of course, your interactions with your team is important, but anyone worth his salt who wants to be a senior leader should be able to stand in front of an audience of 200, 300, 400, 500, whatever, and speak to them and speak from the heart and make a meaningful connection. So this is something, again, a skill that you can develop over time. And you, the earlier you start on it, the better it is. Empowerment, I've talked about it already. I'll give you examples there. Collaboration, uh, I don't really have anything great to say over here. Leading by example. I think this is perhaps again, a very, very important dimension in leadership. Because, you know, whatever we may say, people don't follow what you say, people follow what you do. So it's it's very important that you set the right example. I mean, you, you can't tell, tell people that you need to be punctual if you yourself come late. You have, whatever you do, they will watch you and they will learn from you and they will replicate what you do. So if you want people to behave in a particular way, there's only one way as a leader that you can make that happen. And that is when you lead by example. Coming to inspiration, I've already talked about Kiran as a visionary thinker. I'll give you another example of this. You know, about two or three years before I left, uh, we had now moved along quite, quite a long way. We were now in partnerships with Mylan and things like that, and we were, who developing monoclonal antibodies and stuff. And clearly there was a need for us to develop the next line of leadership. So one day she called me to her office and she said, Ravi, I want you to do a leadership development program for, so I said, okay, who all do you want? So she said, okay, let's look at manager and above. So that's like 150 people at that point of time, just in Bangalore, leaving aside the guys who were in sales and stuff just 150. I mean, 150 people that she was talking of doing a leadership uh, program for. So then I said, okay, what is the kind of budget I have for this? She said, one crore. And I had no further questions. With one crore, I knew I could do it and I did it. So that, that I think is, you know, visionary thinking where you can 
see that there is a need and you're ready to put the resources behind it. Further, um, authenticity, I think it's very, very important. If people don't believe you, if people don't trust you, if people think that you're playing games with them, if people think that you're telling them half the story, you are not going to get them to be able to follow you. Emotional connection, again, uh, you know, this is something that I try to do a lot in my career. If, you know, like, like, like let's say my biocon team. So by, when I joined, I had about 10 people. By the time I left, I had about 50. Uh, and obviously, all 50 did not report to me. But I would ensure that every single person who was being selected into the company, I would meet them before they were hired. So maybe the manager to whom they were reporting or maybe that, that person's manager together more or less would decide who the candidate was. But I had the final uh, discussion with the candidate. And also what I used to do is, you know, like, for example, I was not someone who typically would go out, go down to the cafeteria for lunch. But in my first couple of years, I ensured that I would go down for lunch with different members of the team on different days and not really try to do anything, but just connect with them emotionally. All my team members knew that Ravi's door is always open. I can go and talk to him about anything under the sun, any point of time. I'll give you one more example of this empathy, care, understanding. So I had one of my direct reports who was heading one of the HR functions. And um, he went into clinical depression. Uh, really, nobody knows how it happened, but he actually uh, he had to go to Nimans. He was under medication and for three months, he was not able to come to office. But he was an excellent resource. And the thing was that, okay, what we knew was that uh, eventually clinical depression is really because of hormonal imbalances and, and you, you basically need to make certain corrections in the chemistry in your brain and everything gets back to normal. So of course I had to go to Kiran and tell her that there is this guy and um, he is on leave and he'll be on leave for a little while. And we, But I think that he'll come back and I'm sure he will come back, bounce back and he'll do well. And he did come back and he did do well. Now, many people at such a time, I don't know how many would actually have given their well, somebody who's a senior manager, given him that three months to, and there was, you know, during those three months, we had no clue how long it's, it's actually going to take. But this is something that uh, I, I could talk about. Storytelling, again, something I've learned in BNI, uh, people relate to stories. And the more you can tell stories, the more you can give examples of your life, uh, the more you can even tell stories of the future that you see. And that Kiran was very good at that. Uh, all this can help to align people and inspire them. Recognition and celebration. I think both my elegant days where we used to have an achievers meet every year. So every year, all the top, you know, all the guys who, uh, it was basically a sales and marketing organization. So all the uh, guys who were 100% plus in on target, this is right from the lowermost rep to all the all the, the zonal managers, whatever, everyone would be there, and all the guys from the head office would be there, and we would we would do it really well. I mean, two three days, uh, we've been to well, different parts of India. We've we've done uh, various various things, and people used to really look forward to that. So recognition and celebration, I think, is again a very important aspect of inspiration. Uh, lasting change. Strategic thinking, being able to see strategic thinking is really how do you differentiate your organization from others? How do you, what can you do that others cannot so easily replicate? And I think that is something that can help a leader build an organization for the future. And of course, having worked in pharma biotech for 19 years of my career, I mean, in pharma biotech, if you know your pipeline, you know where your company is going. So strategic thinking was something that we did for a long, long time. And uh, even if I look at my days in Allegan, where quarter after quarter, I worked there for seven years. We had a great CEO. His name eludes me right now. But 
quarter after quarter, seven years in a row, he outdid investor in expectations for the company. Uh, and that's purely because of his strategic thinking. Developing others, I talked about uh, what Ravi Shankar did with me and what I've tried to do with a lot of people. If you go and see my LinkedIn profile, you'll find a lot of people who used to work for me who have talked about how uh, Ravi made me think, made me believe I could do things that I never thought I could do. Um, really leaving a legacy, I think, you know, um, it, even now, people who I meet from some of the organizations that I've worked in, uh, some of them say that people still remember you there. And I think that's a, that's a huge uh, compliment to me. A few days ago, sometime last week, uh, one of my ex-subordinates, she is now working in Bombay, and she was being offered the HR, this is the, the CHRO post in her organization. And she was not sure if she was ready for it or not. And it's been about 10 years since we worked together. But she chose to call me up and speak to me about it. Should I accept it or should I not? And I told her that, see, I, I think you're ready. And I also think, and no, none of us know for sure that we are ready until we actually do it. But I really think you're capable for, of it. And what it all bound, uh, what it all uh, landed up with was, in the end, she has accepted that. And she's asked me to coach her during the period that uh, she starts starts off as the CHRO. Another example that I have is, uh, this is not exactly legacy building, but uh, anyway, I'm going to share it with you. So there's another colleague of mine from my Smithline days. I, I left Smithline in uh, 2000, when, 2000 September when I joined Allegra. And two days ago, I was, uh, I, well, rather last week sometime, he told me that there's this company which is looking for a coach for one of its leaders. Should should I recommend you? And I said, sure, please go ahead. And yesterday, I actually had a talk with the HR head of that company. And my friend had given such glowing tribute about me that there was very little that I actually had to say. He had already done the selling job. And remember, we were colleagues 23 years ago. So that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I say legacy building. Three traits of uh, impactful leaders, adaptability, resilience, empathy. I think these are the things that, okay, and let, let me tell you, you know, if you look at the subheader, uh, so the first time I wrote it, I wrote the impactful leader mindset for today. Then I said, nah, yaar, today is not right, I should write for tomorrow. So then I removed for today and I removed for, for tomorrow. And then I said, no, nah, it's not also, it's not just tomorrow, it's actually present continuous. And so I, I put it back with today and tomorrow. But I think these are things that will help you to differentiate yourself and keep you well prepared for the future. Openness to change. I think, you know, everybody has some amount of uh, resistance to change. Everybody has that fear of the unknown. And as a leader, we must be open to change. We must embrace change. Because if we don't, then our organizations are just going to wither away over time. Learning orientation, again, keep learning in whichever way you can. I talked about how I've used chat GPT for the content of this, this presentation. Now, I mean, I could have equally well sat and thought and made slides myself, which is what I've done in the past for a good 30, 30 odd years. But I thought, okay, this is there. Let me try it. Let's see what happens. And I found it was so easy to use. Sure, I'm using it to color it with my own examples, but it's giving me a very, very good structure. So learning on it, orientation, you must be open to learning and picking up whatever new skills that you can and especially today's world, the youngsters, they know so much more than us. We have to just be open to learning from them. Being flexible, I think, uh, actually openness to change, learning learning orientation, flexibility, they are all very, 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 very close to each other. And you must have that proactive mindset. You know, you have to be a game changer. You have to be someone who wants to bring about some disruption. Sometimes as leaders, we feel that, you know, everything is going well. Why should I rock the boat? Why fix something if it's not broken? But that leads to inertia. You have to be 
if nobody else is shaking the boat and if your competitors are not shaking the boat for you, then sometimes you have to sort of rock around in your chair and, and make the boat uh, tilt a bit. Okay, so important thing that you have you should do. Resilience, I think again, a very important quantity because remember our leadership journey goes on for a long, long time. Uh, we might have started leadership very early on, about a couple of weeks back, you know, one of my childhood friends came from, he lives in Gurgaon now. He, he works in uh, Radisson and uh, he's a very big shot there. And uh, he just told me, Ravi, I'm coming, coming to Bangalore, can we meet for a drink? So we met for a drink in the evening and you know, he reminded me of something from when I was in Tencent. And, and he told me, you know, Ravi, you were our cricket captain. First, you told me that I could bowl. Uh, you told me to focus on my outswinger and I became a good bowler. Then one day you started telling me, Ravi, uh, Javed, you can bat. <laughs> and I started batting. And I realized, you know, this is something that I've actually been doing right through in leadership. I have made people believe in themselves and I've given them that opportunity. And I think growth mindset is really all about that. Positive framing, self-care. Uh, I've, I've, I've got something on self-care, so I'll, I'll come to that later. And empathy, again, is something which is very, very important, especially in today's world where we are dealing with a generation which is, uh, you know, they, their expectations are different. They are, they are less uh, willing to give us a long rope like how we were giving our bosses. So it's really important that you listen actively to them. It's very important that you display emotional intelligence, that you are able to uh, not only see your own emotions, but also uh, be tuned to their emotions and be able to see things from different perspectives. I think that is a very, very important leadership quality that you can, you know, because all of us have a particular way of doing things. All of us have a particular way of seeing things, but you might find that people with different background, different experience, different motivation might, might come up with a totally different way of doing things, which are equally valid. And you must be willing to take that perspective into consideration and give them an opportunity to do it. This is my last main slide. Okay. So Yeah. Hmm? Um, sir, I'll interrupt you here. I'll just call on. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to redirect them to another poll. Um, so um, audience, I will just request all of you to check your chat quickly. So I've pasted a link there. Now this is going to redirect you to our LinkedIn page. We have a live poll running right now there on Leadership Mastery. So I'd request all of you to click on that link and this should redirect you to that page. Just take about 10 seconds to quickly respond to that and then you can come back here. We can uh, go back with our slides. So, uh, so if it's okay, let's give them a minute on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me when to start talking because like, you know, I can't see anyone. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. Okay, looks like there's someone who's already responded there. Okay. All right, that was quick. Okay. So let me wait for a while. Wow. Okay. I already have like eight words there. Interesting. All right. So audience, another thing on the sideline, um, you can use the chat and QA to uh, put up your queries. We will take that up shortly as we're almost done. I think we can just get into question and answers right after this. And um, those of you who'd like to directly uh, interact with Mr. Ravi, I'll be able to do that as well. I'll be able to um, give you that option. Okay, so I think we can uh, uh, go back to the slide, sir. Over to you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the in the first point, really, what I want to talk about is the physical well-being. So as we all mature as leaders, we get busier and busier. And as we get older, our metabolism slows down. And as we get richer, our food gets richer as well. And it's really important that you take time and effort to work on yourself physically. 
it is only towards the last two or three years of my corporate career that I started going to the gym. I've stopped doing it now. In fact, since the pandemic, I haven't gone back to the gym. But um, it's something that I really enjoyed. And I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning so that I could go to the, spend an hour in the gym, come back, get ready, drive an hour to Bi Biocon and uh, go to work over there. So important that you take care of both your physical as well as your mental well-being. Stress management, pressure, stress is sort of comes with the role. And you have to find ways to relax yourself. Different things work for different people. Someone is meditation, someone it's hobbies, someone it's yoga. Uh, you have to find out what works for you. Someone it's just spending time uh, with their family, someone it's cooking, someone is riding a motorcycle. It doesn't matter what it does, which what is the method you use, but you must have some way to deal with your stress. Uh, another very important aspect here is that you know when you prioritize your self care, you actually get recharged, and then you come back with fresh thinking, fresh ideas, and you are able to actually contribute much better. So it's very important that you take that time for self care as well. It also helps you to improve your decision making. When it comes to role modeling, I, I want to talk to you about you know what my what I'm seeing now in my uh, in my BNI chapter. So uh, I've got a chapter of about sixty people. I I'm one of the oldest, if not the oldest member there. Uh, the youngest is about twenty two or twenty three, and uh, majority are in the thirty forty kind of range. And uh, they've seen the kind of lifestyle I have. And I'm not talking about it being an opulent lifestyle, but I'm talking about I work for maybe between five and 10 days in a month. The rest of the time I'm spending in my farmhouse. Uh, I go for long treks. A couple of weeks ago, my wife, uh, my daughter and me, we drove to uh, Kerala. We, we went to Tikri and there we did a... Uh, a trek in this Periyar Tiger Reserve, which is about 18 kilometers trekking in the forest. Uh, so I, I do things like that. And you know, these guys actually come and tell me, you know, Ravi, that when we get to your age, we want to be like you. So role modeling is all that, you know, where, where you, you don't really tell people do this, do that. But when they see you, when they see you behaving in a particular way, for me, this balance in life is very important. And I, I see, I felt that, okay, I got out of corporates when I was 50. And today I'm 58. And uh, I know that I've got maybe about 5-10 years of productive work ahead of me. I did not want to stretch my corporate career as long as possible and then have very little time left or little bit energy left to actually get into consulting and coaching. So I wanted to do it when I was still fairly young, when I was still, I won't say fairly young, but I was still young enough to put in energy and effort into it. And that I think is a very important thing. Uh, being long-term sustainable, I think that again is very important. And uh, I'll give you an example of something I didn't do, which perhaps in hindsight I should have done. So my house is somewhere near the, for those of you who are in Bangalore, my house is near the old airport and Biocon, of course, as you know, is on the Hosu road. It's about 20 kilometers from the Tamil Nadu Hosu border. So from my house to Biocon was a good 25 kilometers and I had to drive down old airport road, intermediate ring road, onto the Hosu road. So I go through Koramangla, onto the Hosu road, get, the, get onto the elevated road once it was built and go on. And my wife used to tell me after a few years, Ravi, why are you doing this every day? Because it was so it was so far that I felt I should not have a driver to you know, drive me for one hour in the morning and then sleep the whole day and then drive me back. Besides, I love driving. So there's no way that I was going to let somebody else drive. And yet it was very tiring. So she kept telling me, you know, why don't you just take a place, uh, rent, a, rent a place near the office so that maybe three, four days in the week, you stay there and you come back when, whenever you want, weekends you spend with us. But I felt, no, 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 I need to, I need to come back every day. And perhaps that 
you know, that tool of seven years doing that three, four hours of driving every day, it did take a toll. And this is something that perhaps everybody should take, should take into consideration. I'm not just talking about commute, but look at what is causing you trouble. Look at what are the difficult aspects of your work. And is there some way to simplify it? And if so, please go for it. Improving relationships. I think during, during my career, I always used to take holidays. Uh, yes, I, it would be necessary for me to carry my laptop along. Uh, we would be on foreign holidays. My, when my wife and children were sleeping, I would be sitting in the night and answering emails. But I used to in, make it a point of taking time out and spending time with them. And I think it's very important that you focus on your relationships and really the support that you get from your family is what will help you to excel as a leader. If you don't have that family support, all of us will fall, falter at some point of time. And finally, there has to be a sense of holistic fulfillment. You have to be able to not just measure the achievements that you've done at work, but really, when you look back at your life, do you feel satisfied? Do you feel that I've lived my life to the full? I've, I've, we all play different roles. And have I played all these various roles? Father, son, husband, friend, neighbor. Have I played all those roles well? I think it's very important that we find time to play each of these roles. And on that happy note, we're done with the presentation. I will just stop trying to share the. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, presentation, sir. Um, I mean, I think I think what really highlighted here was uh, your life experiences and uh, you know those those personal touches is what I think uh, uh, made this webinar a tad bit better for sure. So thanks for that, sir. I think we can take up some queries. Um, so I, let me leave the um, you know the chat open and anyone who'd like to interact with Mr. Ravi directly. I'll be able to do that. And I did receive some queries on um, during the registrations. Maybe you can read out two or three of those. Okay, sure. To start with, while, while others uh, put in their stuff. In yeah, the sure, sure, sure. Just give me one moment on that. I will share that right away. All right. Um, so, first question from Mr. Tennyson. Okay, uh, how can we build a local organizational culture culture which mirrors the global culture with local flavor? Uh, do you want me to put this on the chat, sir? I mean, uh, no. I think I think I want to. Okay. Got to say, you can put it on the chat uh, for the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do yeah. That. So I think you know this. This is a challenge that all. Uh, people working in MNC's face. And I know Tennyson personally, so he is the MD of a company based out of Pune. His headquarters is in New Zealand. And I think what you need to do is, first and foremost, the values of the organization have to mirror the values of the corporate. And also, when you interact with your senior leadership, you see their behaviors. And to what extent you can mirror that behavior, I think that will help you too replicate that culture in your setup as well. Of course, as Indians, we are different from many others and uh, there will always be that Indian touch in what we do. But I'm, I'm sure that we can actually bring about the best of both worlds. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, um, next question. Operation. Okay. Okay. Um, I think this one's, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's more on the startup venture, but I'll read it. This one's from Ms. Afrin. Key pointers for startup uh, for HR team planning. Okay. So, see, basically, in a startup, I think uh, 
what hr has to understand is that you are an enabler of business you have to get the right team in place i think it's the important role of hr in a startup is getting the right kind of people who have the right mindset who have the ability to you know because you will have you have a set of people who have worked largely in large companies who worked in mncs and many of them don't actually uh, fit very well in a startup culture so in a startup you need somebody who is quick on their feet you need somebody who is intuitive you need somebody who is innovative in their actions you need somebody who's a risk taker so i think the role of hr is really that uh, are you able to bring in people with the right skill sets who can help your startup organization in the early stages and help them to grow people who can actually take up responsibilities and run with them so that uh, they can contribute to the growth of the organization thank you wonderful um so there's one question that's already on the chat uh, from mr jeevan is is empathetic or sympathetic which uh, approach is a better one i think that's that's what is mentioned yeah okay uh so mr jeevan the way i see it is sympathy is feeling sorry for somebody whereas empathy is understanding their perspective understanding their point of view and without immersing yourself into that sorrow you understand their feelings you understand their emotions and you come up with a solution that deals with it i think that's really the better way there's no point i mean that person is crying in front of you and you start crying with them that does, really doesn't solve anybody's problem but if you can deal with empathy with their situation understand what is the problem they're going through and you can come up with something just by understanding that and you come up with something very practical without actually getting part of the problem yourself uh, empathy is in my view a better one whether ai will impact indian hr perspective and displace people heavily or not uh, so ai is definitely going to impact not only hr is going to impact everyone whether large scale people will be made redundant i don't think so but there will you know, rules are going to change the things that people do uh, you know just and i very deliberately told you all that i have used chat gpt to make this presentation simply because you know till, till a week ago i had not i had not tried it and then my daughter uh, she she did, she builds websites and she does um, what is it called um, social media marketing for for some of her clients and she came across a webinar which somebody was doing ai and chat gpt for consultants and she said papa why don't you do it i am also going to do it and it was only 500 bucks so i said okay let's let's do it together and i watched that thing and you know that person actually demonstrated uh, using chat gpt a few times and i realized that okay this is something which is very easily done i can do it myself and that, that's why uh before i act, actually you know my, my typical way of making a presentation is i start with blank paper and i just start writing down my thoughts and once i have quote main thoughts then i develop each thought into a slide that's typically how i work but now what i did was i just thought about okay so what some of the things that i that matter to me in leadership and i just started keying them in and something came out and i queried that and something else came out and i queried that but what i'm trying to tell you is that uh, the time it took me to put that presentation together was a fraction of what it would have done otherwise the kind of mental effort that was required was again a fraction because i was not thinking of what are the points to write but if these are the points which are the examples that i have from my life that i can use to illustrate them and that came very naturally and easily to me so it didn't take me too long to make this presentation okay so ai and uh, ai is definitely going to impact all organizations i think there will be some organizations which will uh, 
which will be quite ruthless in the way that they respond to it. There will be many which will see, okay, if my person can doesn't need to do this anymore, can I? How can I use them better? So you you'll, you'll find different types. But that was a nice question. Human capital, human asset, or manpower? Which one is appropriate state in present? Manufacturing field. Uh, well, I've been in manufacturing all my life. Uh, I think initially we used to look at them as just bodies with hands uh, and we, we didn't want them to think. Today, I think that that paradigm is gone. You have to not only get your people to think, you have to allow them to think because that's what they want. And therefore, I feel that uh, definitely, you know, human capital, human asset, this is all jargon. It is how you think about the people. Do you, do you actually value them? Do you listen to them? Do you take their suggestions when there is something new that has to be done? Very often as a leader, you know, we, we think we know the answers. We, we can just call our team and say, Achha, ye karo. And they will do it. There is a it's a very, very different thing if you tell them, let us do planning together. So, for example, for me, you know, when, when I used to do goal setting in Biocon for my HR team, uh, for it is I used to do this every year. And I used to ensure that Kiran would come and she would address us for about an hour in terms of what were her expectations from us. Then I would talk about what I saw based on obviously my uh, own thinking and whatever. And then I would break them up into different teams. You know, so the comp and bent team, the learning and development team, the HR ops team, the business partners, all of them would sit and they would work on their own team goals. Okay, based on what Kiran has said, what Ravi has said. And I would float around the group and keep on uh, giving them a little bit of input here and there. Once they were ready, they would all come and each group would present and others would give feedback. And that would more or less end the, the first day. Then we had the second day where uh, they would use that feedback, again, make a presentation. This one would be more or less fixed. But what happens here is that people have shown ownership. I have allowed them to decide what they were going to do. And when you do that, you find that people show much more ownership than before. You know, I was never worried when I used to travel. I never, I never used to worry about what are my people doing. I would never bother to go and check the CCTV and see what they are doing there. Because for me, I knew that they were engaged. I knew that they knew what they had to do and they would do it whether they knew Ravi is in Bangalore, Ravi is in uh, Singapore, Ravi is in Japan. <laughs> it really didn't matter. They, they, they knew that uh, they knew what they wanted to do and they would do it. And I would come back and I'd see that, okay, this is the progress that they had made. So I, I hope Mr. Jeevan, I've answered your question. Thank you, sir. Um... So I I was just uh, thinking if anyone wants to um, you know probably like um, <clears throat> uh, directly talk to you at, uh, let us just uh, check if anyone would like to do that uh, so audience I, I would just like to uh, ask if there's anyone who would like to directly interact with Mr Ravi I have, we normally do this on every webinar um, so just raise your hand with the feature or you can just give me a yes or no on chat and I will be able to do that. Straight away. Yeah, that'll be lovely to see somebody when I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. so okay. far I've not seen a single person on this webinar. <laughs> now at least I can see myself, which is some concept. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, anyone? Uh, see okay, we have one. Not bad. Mr. Palni Swami, uh, sure, right away. You should be able to unmute and talk, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. This is Palni. I hope uh, you remember me when I joined Alargan 2000. I think yes. you, for you and me, just three months difference only, sir. July I joined and I think you joined in September as uh, HR. Yeah. So nice to meeting you. I always follow your <laughs> post and all. So when I saw this uh, webinar, immediately I registered. So nice to talking to you and uh, seeing you in person after a long time. 
thank you very much so you nice have any questions no sir specifically i think uh, everything you addressed uh, i think i noted down also really thank you very much a lot of new learnings today uh, thanks for all that contribution today i am in this position started as a medical rep in this organization today i am heading that uh, institution business so wow. thank you very much <laughs> Thank you. I am so happy to hear this and I'm so happy that you unmuted and spoke out. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Palli. Okay, if there's anyone else who has a question or anything there is, uh, it could be, it, it doesn't have to be specifically on the lines of leadership. There's anything else. Um, uh, the, the ground is open for all of you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There's a question. Any, okay. Okay. Any books on leadership you would like to recommend to emerging leaders, young talents? Uh, so there are two books that I like. One is called The Startup of You, uh, and there is another book. One that I trying to remember the name. Uh, this is by one of the LinkedIn founders. Okay. You start, uh, the startup of you is one, one good book that you can definitely look at. Uh, Guy Kawasaki has also written a very, 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 very nice book about. Uh, so so this, this is, you know, really how to think like an entrepreneur. And I think today's world is we are moving towards a gig economy. The, uh, like my daughter has worked for three months in a former job. She is today 28, 29. She is not going to go back into formal employment ever. She's just going to be either sitting at her bed or sitting at the dining table. Now she said that I've got a spare room in my office. Uh, and she said that, okay, she's going to set it up as her office someday. I, I don't know when it'll happen. But today is the day of the gig economy. And I think each one of us, if we can harness our skills, our talents, and just do the things that we enjoy doing, we will find that there are more than enough takers come for you. Today, with technology, with the internet, you can have clients anywhere in the world. I'm coaching people sitting in the US and all that. So, you know, it's everything is possible. And you you must start, uh, You if you're young, you know, I think two things really spoil people. One is going to school. Other thing is going to work. Because they, they teach you all the wrong things and, they, and they, they put you in a pigeonhole and, and you stop thinking for yourself. So if you can avoid that and you start doing something for yourself, you'll be much, much happier in life. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, I will. I know we've already spent quite a lot of time on the webinar. Um, we can take up a few more questions, maybe about another two, three minutes, sir, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I, I'd like to see if there's anyone who'd like to directly ask any questions, talk to Mr. Ravi. Okay. Okay, so, so the second book is called The Art of the Smart by Guy Kawasaki. The Art of the Smart. Okay, the art of the smart. Will you be typing that, sir, or do you want me to? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Ravi, I think we will uh, we will share the presentation. Not to worry on that. I've forgotten the name of the LinkedIn founder, but that the name of the book is this, The Startup of You. So these two books, I think they're great books and uh, I'm sure you will, you will enjoy them. Yeah, so Ravi Kumar, when, when I put this thing together, the reason why I actually kept that uh, the deck part of it, the stuff that uh, chat GPT generated for me is I think you will get stuff both from what I said as well as what is written there. So you can there it's like having two resources uh, in hand. It's not art of the smart, it's art of the start, huh? I just tried it. <laughs> okay. 
Great. Okay. So um, I think I don't think we are getting any questions. Yeah. So Thank you. Uh, on Thank that, you very much. And once again, my yeah. apologies for us starting late. No, no, no. That's brushed aside, sir. <laughs> Not to worry on that. Thing. So, thank you all, audience. Thank you all for being a wonderful audience. And a uh, special thanks to Mr. Ravi for taking the time out and the efforts on the presentation and the webinar itself. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we we'll look forward to having you on yet another webinar in the coming months. And I will also share out a post webinar mailer. Uh, some of them are requesting a presentation. Do you think we can share it, sir? The point absolutely, is? absolutely. Good point. Yeah. So, I. Mean, I Perfect. So I'm very happy to do that. Okay, wonderful. So I will share that uh, to the audience in the post webinar mailer, and the recording will also be shared, guys. So thank you all, and uh, have a wonderful evening. And thank you, Mr. Ravi. Good day.